Uh, hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 4.14, Polarization of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, Book 2. Um, I'm going to move fast, but you can always rewind. If you have a comment, you can add it in the comments below or do it in a video response. And um, if you enjoy what I'm doing, if you appreciate my effort, be sure to, to like and share with your friends. So the um, polarization. So the question is, what happens when we go from single atoms and single molecules to matter? you know, um, to big chunks of stuff. What happens if you take a bunch of atoms uh, bouncing around like a gas or maybe in a liquid or something or whatever, or metal, you know, um, or some kind of solid, you know, and um, you subject that to an electric field? Well, what's going to happen is if they're neutral, then they're going to be polar. They're going to have a dipole moment induced, and there's going to be something that's going to align with electric field there. If it's a crystal where everything's aligned in this particular way, maybe they're going to Maybe the dipole moment won't point in the same direction as electric field. Maybe it'll be point off to some other direction because it's more easy to polarize in one direction than the other. other. Um, the next thing that happens is like things like water, where you already have a dipole moment, even though there's no electric field. When you subject that to an electric field, then all the molecules bouncing around are going to tend to align with that electric field. But the net effect is the same. What's going to happen is you take a you know a chunk of matter that is a dielectric. It's, it's a, it's a non-conductor, it's an insulator. And you subject that to some kind of electric field, right? It doesn't even have to be constant, right? And inside, you're going to get a whole bunch of tiny little dipole moments. The sums of the region of dipole moments near the by. Remember, you can add dipole moments as long as the two things are close to each other and the net charge is zero, which in the case of this, they are. So this electric field induces a per volume dipole moment, which we're going to use capital P to represent called the polarization, right? And that's going to be basically a dipole moment per, per volume. The, the nice thing about P is that we kind of get away from thinking about whether we're dealing with polarized things in the beginning or not. Um, and we move towards you know thinking more in terms of like large scale effects. So in the next section, 4.2, we're going to examine what happens um, when you have polarized material, not not a single dipole moment atom or molecule, but polarized material. What kind of electric field does that produce? What kind of charge, surface charge? Um, we're going to find out about the bound charge on the inside. Um, what, and then the, the last section, we're going to deal with how does um, everything bring come together the electric field that's inducing a polarization and the, the polarization of the material and everything kind of work together to to solve problems uh, of the big picture anyway this is a short, short section hope you enjoyed it um, just remember the big p is the dipole moment little p over some unit volume it's just averaging it over some area anyway hope that helps take care bye